Sure. This is on Connie Marshall. Mm -hmm. uh, last time we were here, you, she wanted me to get the doctor's notes. Mm -hmm. She took some evaluation. I have okay. those. Good. Um, I guess you wanted me to give those to her? or mm -hmm. Okay. I you guess do that. I got them. I wasn't sure if you wanted me to give them to her or if you just wanted me to get them. No. Uh, if she wants them, uh, that was the purpose, is to get them okay. and give them to her. Okay. Now, Ms. Fields. Anyway, yeah, come on up here, uh, Ms. Marshall. Hello, Ms. Marshall. Uh, uh, I talked to Mr. Wine just one second ago, and he said that he has managed to get these uh, documents from the doctor. So that's always good. And what are the, let me see on Mr. Uh, Wayne. May I speak regarding that, Judge? Give me one second. Okay. Let me look at this, and then uh, I'll be better able to talk to you about it. Yeah, we could have a better copy, but they do look mainly legible. Now, do you have a copy of your own, Mr. Wayne? Yes, Judge. All right. <coughs> All right, uh, Nick, I'll give you some, Ms. Marshall. Ms. Marshall, these are the documents that Mr. Wayne was able to get from the doctor. And is that, uh, who is the doctor? Dr. Smedley, Judge. Dr. Smedley. May I speak on this, please, Judge? Sure. Okay. Today I filed a notice to terminate public, and this is in relations to this, pa this paperwork, okay. so I need to read this. Notice to terminate public defender Alexander Wayan, as he is obstructing justice, is in contempt of court, not following this court's orders, and not acting in the defendant's best interest. And I need to read this. Go ahead. Comes the defendant, Connie Marshall, and files this notice to terminate public defender Alexander Wayne, as he is obstructing justice, is in contempt of court, not following this court's orders, and not acting in the defendant's best interests. Alexander Wayne has shown on at least five occasions that he, he is not going to follow this court's orders and is not acting in the defendant's best interests. This evidence is clearly shown in the court record on the court videos on October 16th, 2013, November 7th, 2013, and December, December 4th, 2013. Number one, Ms. Marshall states that she requested a copy of the psychological evaluation and was refused a copy by Mr. Wayne, though Judge Delahanty stated on October 16th, 2013, and the court record will show that she may obtain a copy of the evaluation from Alexander Wayne in its entirety. Number two, on November 7, 2013, Judge Delahanty again in court told Mr. Wayne to obtain a copy of the psychological evaluation in its entirety and give Ms. Marshall a copy. And Ms. Marshall again was not given a copy, though her next court date was on December 4, 2013. And when Ms. Marshall tried to contact Alexander Wayne, she was either told that he was out of the country or not in the office. And though Ms. Marshall left messages, he would not contact her. Number three, Ms. Marshall obtained a copy of the case history and found out that police officer Brandon Hogan was subpoenaed to be in court on November 7, 2013, and he was not present. Ms. Marshall states that there was no mention. There was no mention on November 7, 2013, by attorney Alexander Wayne, or the judge of police officer Brandon Hogan, not showing up after being subpoenaed to come to court on November 7, 2013. <coughs> This is an important factor in this case due to the fact that the police officers in this case, witnesses for the prosecution, have never shown up for court at the arraignment or during the one year and seven months that Ms. Marshall has been coming to court. 17 appearances ranging from June 28, 2012 to present day January 27, 2014. Number four, on December 4, 2013, Judge Delahanty again told Mr. Wayne to obtain a copy of the psychological evaluation in its entirety and give Ms. Marshall a copy, and Ms. Marshall was not given a copy, though her next court date is on January 27, 2014. 
To date, January 27, 2014, Ms. Marshall does not have a copy. Ms. Marshall tried to contact Mr. Wayne numerous times and could not get in contact with him. After finally speaking with him on Friday, January the 24th, 2014, she was again told by him, Mr. Wayne, that he would not give her a copy of the psychological evaluation. Number five, Ms. Marshall states she was forced to employ a public defender on September 26, 2013 by this court, but at a previous court date she was told that she did not qualify. For all these reasons, Ms. Marshall files this pleading to terminate public defender Alexander Wayne as he is object obstructing justice, is in contempt of court, not following this court's orders on over five occasions, and not acting in this defendant's best interest. All right, now hang on for a second. Now, uh, Ms. Marshall, have you ever received a copy of the evaluation? The only copy I received was the copy that uh, you gave me, which was not in its entirety. It was a typed copy. Uh, and I received that, I guess, uh, I can't remember, they may, maybe two court dates ago or something. All right, so you have received a copy of an evaluation. It's, an it's just a typed uh, a right, document. But they, right, on, but they have on, tapes. I, hang on. Okay. Hang on. I want to make sure I, I understand where we are in the world here today. So, uh, you received a copy of the evaluation, and that's something that's different than a lot of other things. Um, so, you have a copy of the evaluation. Today, you received um, the sort of the notes that are the basis for uh, the completion of the typed uh, evaluation, the formal evaluation. So those are sort of the, the doctor's notes regarding the evaluation. All right. Now, uh, somehow you believe that there are a, a tape recorded, um, tape recording of your sessions with the doctor. Usually, they have they tape you when you're uh, being evaluated. But you don't know this. I don't know that, but I okay. I requested it in its entirety. All right. well, we're and you find told out. him to file a letter, which is not filed in the case, uh, so that you could give him an order to get to her to request it in its entirety. We he got, has not we, done that. We believe that we have this. And Mr. Wine, you know anything about any uh, recorded recordings? Judge, I do not, and I guess Dr. Smelly could speak to anything else that exists that we don't have. Okay. I've obtained no. these, and I apologize for the confusion earlier. I'm more than happy to turn those over to, to Ms. Marshall now. And, and part of it was uh, uh, Mr. Wine has stated previously that the public defender, his employer, his boss tells him that they are not to give evaluations to clients. That's just the policy of the public defender's office in total. Well, so. Your Honor, giving me this document this morning at um, almost 12 o'clock, and I have a competency hearing 11. at 1 o'clock, right. does not give me time to go over her notes and to research what I need to research. I'm not a doctor, I'm not an attorney, and I'm not any type of, of law official, so I would have to research to find out if what she says in her paperwork is indeed true. All right. Uh, you'll have a couple of hours to do that because we're now at 11 o'clock. It's not 12, it's 11 o'clock. Okay. And uh, But I don't have a computer and I don't have my things which are on my desk at my home. I'm not in my little small office that I have. I don't know what those things are. What are those things? I have my computer. I have my printer. I have my uh, CD player. I have my tape recorder, right. I have my fax machine, I have my telephones. Okay. Um, I guess the, the bottom line is this. You're gonna, you need to take a look at those and see uh, the documents that you received today. You need to take a look at those and just see uh, uh, if you can find them useful. Because maybe they are, maybe they aren't. I don't know. Because I think what you're going to find is the handwritten notes that you have there on that document right there are very likely to be uh, pretty much everything that is included in the formal um, uh, evaluation that was prepared by Dr. Smedley. Um, May I are, speak? Uh, one more second. Okay. And we are scheduled today for a, um, a competency uh, hearing. Is that true, Ms. Yes. Fields? And the Commonwealth is prepared to go forward? Yes. All right. Now, here's where we are on that uh, issue, Ms. Marshall. So, in all of the times that you come before the court, you're complaining about you know, we're not, this case is not moving fast enough. You're being denied a, uh, uh, your right to a speedy trial, and we're just spinning our wheels, and nothing's happening to, uh, you know, a great hardship to you. Um, I want to have the competency hearing today. Now, I need for you to review those documents, and uh, certainly they could be helpful to uh, 
uh, if you find things that are lacking or that you believe that there's some um, mischief occurring, if someone's not being entirely truthful, uh, the doctor will be here for uh, a cross-examination. Uh, getting to your motion to remove uh, Mr. Wayne, I'm going to deny that. Um, although, and I've told you this before, Ms. Marshall, I think you're very intelligent, you're very articulate, but you're not a lawyer, as you've uh, acknowledged in your argument. You're not trained in law. Uh, I think you're going to find that Mr. Wayne will be helpful to you during the course of the um, hearing that we have regarding your competency. Plus, I'm, I'm. Uh, May I ask why I'm having a competency hearing in the first place? In that I don't have any mental problems, and since I've been stomped by the police and. I've been coming to court since June 2012. All of a sudden in March, for no reason, I'm told I have to have a mental evaluation by a court-appointed attorney. I'm, I don't understand why. I was the one. I'm, I'm the one that ordered the evaluation. It was me. Can you tell me what I have done that would cause you to order a mental evaluation when I don't have any mental problems in my background, but then after I get stomped by the police and I come to court from June 12th to March 2013, I'm ordered to go to a psychologist? Well, uh, from all the parties involved and in my many interactions with you, despite the fact that I believe you're very intelligent, I do believe that you uh, perhaps uh, are not the high, uh, that you are in fact suffering from some kind of a mental illness. And I wanted to, to check that out. I wanted to uh, have a professional examine you and, ha and render a professional opinion about your abilities uh, to assist in your defense, uh, to appreciate the nature of your crimes, and that evaluation occurred. And as I, and again, I'm not uh, absolutely fam familiar with the evaluation, but the evaluation says that you are incompetent to stand trial. And what is that based on? That's based on what she states, because I passed every test, but one test that I did not take. So it's based on her saying I'm delusional because I'm stating the police are tormenting me when I have recordings, I have audios, I have videos to prove that the police have been tormenting me. And I have emails from them threatening my life. So because I state that, all of a sudden I'm supposed to be incompetent because she says it. I'm not exactly sure that that was the sole basis for her finding. But I, have her, I have my test scores I from those tests. Well, we are going to have a hearing and you will be able to ask her questions. Now it would be very helpful to have Mr. Wyan here and I'm going to say Mr. Wyan has got to be here and to assist you as best he can. But part of it is this. In Your the Honor, Mr. Wyan has not even followed what you told him to do. He got um, you the document that I ordered three him to do. Sir, you Get told you. him on three or four different court dates, no disrespect, and he didn't do what you said to do. I have the videos. Yes, yeah, he did because you got it. Each time. He didn't get it as quickly as you might want it, but now you have it. Your Honor, and now we are ready to move forward. Your Honor, may I speak? Sure. Okay. I read. And I remember. I know what okay. you Okay. You told him as okay, early as. I need as you to stop right there, Connie. I'm not going to go through that again. I okay. understand that completely. But the, there's some difficulty because Mr. Wyan, his boss is telling him one thing. I am telling him another, right? And then we got to get to the doctor, and the doctor is a busy woman. And we have all of the things that you wanted, and you have them now. You have some time to go through those. But may I speak? Uh, if we're going to talk about the same things we've no, already I'm talked just about. Gonna say, gonna... I just want to respond to you saying his boss is saying one mm -hmm. thing and you're saying another. You're the judge. That's right. On the video, you're telling him, uh, no, you're I'm telling you, okay. that's what you told him, I'm, I'm telling he you got those, to get the you report. Have them. And I've come back to court three times, and he's never given Today's to me. Today's the day. And he refused have Friday. Them. You have and them. Judge, I apologize to Ms. Marshall for any delays. I'm more than happy to cross-examine Dr. Smelly today on her behalf. And I'm gonna you're going to be here, Mr. Wine. my best over. helper. Well, you're going to do the best you can. That's you're all right, you can he do. He hasn't filed anything in the case. I'm not all worried of this about him is from me. This is my and foul. Judge, again. He even said I've done a good job on my case. You've even said I've done, right. done a good job. All right. And I've well, been filing all the And here's how this goes. Hang on for a second. Uh, part of it is this, Mr. Wayne. Um, and Ms. Fields, uh, when we have this competency, competency hearing, I'm asking you to assist Ms. Marshall. And Ms. Marshall, you're going to need to understand that lacking the training, you're very likely to be well, not as direct and straightforward in getting the information that you need. 
and I, I, I anticipate that there will be a lot of, you know, arguing about what you can ask and can't ask and can we get to where we're going. And, but we're going to do the best we can. That's all we can do. And you need Mr. Wine where you, whether you realize it or not. And see, and part of it is this. It's a, sort of, I'm faced with a professional's opinion that says that Connie Marshall cannot participate in her defense because of various reasons. But nonetheless, I'm going to allow you to participate in your defense. But I'm going to require Mr. Wyan to uh, participate in the defense because you need Mr. Wyan, in my opinion. So what we may do, we may have a period of time where Ms. Marshall will be able to ask questions, and I'm going to ask Ms. Marshall to stop. And I'm going to say, Mr. Wyan, I need for you to ask questions, and I may tell you, you've got to stop. And I may say, Ms. Marshall, it's time for you for additional questions. And then you've got to stop. And then, Mr. Wyan, it's time for you for some questions, and then you have to stop. Judge, should we need to have a hearing to see if Ms. Marshall can represent herself in this case? I believe the competency motion stayed all proceedings, and I was appointed at that time. So I'm not sure we can't, can't even have one of those hearings. But if I'm not going to be the one doing the sole cross-examining and the sole argument. You're not going to do the sole argument. It's over. Do we need to have a hearing to see if Ms. Marshall can do that herself? Uh, and represent herself without you. Okay. She cannot represent herself without you. That's I'm, why you're here. I understand. Mr. Wyan, I mean, you're, you're, oh, oh, Mr. Wyan now. I understand. You're here to do the best you can with Ms. Marshall. Okay. And May I ask what he's done? Because he hasn't no, done anything. Uh, I've done today's it Today's the day. He got you that document right there after a, a I already have it. I already have the document you from the court. Right I, asked for, I asked for it in its entirety, and you told him to get that. He did not but do that. He got what he's gotten, and we can ask the doctor if there are other things. Okay, that's fine. Mr. Wine, you need to give that to okay. Ms. Field. I also filed uh, some other documents in the case that I need to present at this time, if I may. Not at this time. And, Judge, I, I would object to this kind of hybrid representation scheme. I prefer to be her, her attorney, but... Well, I don't want to use him. I know. See, and I, I, I'm having difficulty communicating with Mr. Wine right at the moment because, Mr. Wine, the only way this is ever going to happen <coughs> is this hybrid sort of thing. And then... We may, uh, and I need to look, because it's kind of difficult, because I'm, I'm telling this uh, Ms. Marshall that she can act in some regard as her own attorney in the face of an evaluation that says that she cannot cooperate with her lawyer. Judge, that's part of my concern. Okay, well, I understand your concern, but I, I, can I tell you this? I think, and I, I, and I hate to even suggest this to Ms. Marshall, but if I said, Ms. Marshall, you don't get to cross-examination the doctor, cross-examine the doctor, that then there would be, we would be prevented from having the hearing because she is pretty unequivocal that she does not want you to represent her. May I speak regarding... So then, hang on for okay. a second, Ms. Marshall. So then the question is, so that, do I, okay, fine. There's some irreconcilable differences between Mr. Wine and Ms. Marshall, and I need to appoint another public defender. If I appoint another public defender, it's very likely we're going to have irreconcilable differences. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the best we can with two people who, uh, you know, are having difficulties communicating or whatever. Ms. Marshall, what else have you got there? Uh, the Commonwealth filed a notice motion order, uh, which he didn't act on. I acted on it. They filed a notice motion to quash a subpoena pursuant to CR 45.04. A have, subpoena for who? Uh, Carolyn Miller Cooper. I filed numerous who complaints. Is that? I don't uh, know she her. is the executive director of the Human Relations Commission. The Commonwealth filed a motion to? To quash it. Okay. And he why didn't did do you anything. Why did you subpoena that person? Uh, I subpoenaed her because she's a key witness in my case, in that I filed numerous complaints from 2000. Did she witness the events that from occurred 2000, on that day? She went to. The, the uh, uh, psychologist is trying to say that I'm incompetent because I'm saying, and I'm delusional, because I'm saying that I'm being tormented and harassed by the police. Okay. Carol Miller Cooper has witnessed that I've been to Human Relations Commission since 2007 through 2012 filing complaints regarding the Louisville Metro Police. I don't uh, think that that's, I, I'm not ruled on that. Anyway, I think everybody And I back. filed, I filed. Ms. Marshall, okay. I need everybody to come back at 1 o'clock. You need to study that document you just received today. Mr. Wine, you need to get Ms. Fields okay. a copy of that document yes, today. And we'll see everybody back at 1 o'clock, and we're going to do the best we can. That's because that's all we can do. Sounds good, Judge. See you, see you all then.